everyone. My name is Scott Shu, and I'm a program director at ARPA-E, where I lead and manage the fusion energy programs within ARPA-E's energy technology portfolio. And I'm excited to talk to you today. This webinar is about fusion energy with advanced fuels. Fusion energy sits at arguably the highest risk, highest impact end of ARPA-E's entire energy technology portfolio. Fusion has the potential to be a high power density, firm, low carbon energy source that can possibly be sited near dense population centers. Fusion can potentially disrupt the way humans generate and use energy. Fusion is valuable risk mitigation for the world to achieve cost effective net zero greenhouse gas emissions while meeting growing energy demand and electrification. Recently, we recorded a an energy brief video, episode seven, that overviews ARPA-E's active fusion portfolio. Our ongoing program beta supports R&D into the fusion core or the fire to lower the cost and advance the performance of the plasma core. Our GAMOF program, on the other hand, supports R&D uh, of the surrounding systems, in particular, everything from the first wall to the heat exchanger. I encourage you to look at the Energy Brief video for more information on our ongoing programs. This webinar is focused on fusion with advanced fuels, or FAF for short, while DT fusion, that is using deuterium and tritium, is the easiest to achieve from a physics perspective. It's very difficult from an engineering perspective for reasons that I'll describe. Fusion with advanced fuels, as shown here, DD, D and helium-3, and P and boron-11, are the next easiest uh, fusion reactions to achieve from a physics perspective. And key advantages of FAF are a significant reduction of energetic neutron production, which damages first wall materials, and avoidance of tritium, which must be bred as a fuel. FAF can potentially eliminate or simplify difficult and costly quote-unquote fireplace subsystems by avoiding energetic neutrons and use of tritium as a fuel. This is illustrated in the schematic of a fusion system. If one replaces the DT plasma in the center with an advanced fuel plasma, you can see how many of the different systems might be eliminated or significantly simplified, and thus Fusion with advanced fuels has the potential to dramatically lower capex, opex, as well as levelized cost of energy, and also more easily satisfy future regulatory requirements. What's the catch? FAF has much more challenging physics requirements with respect to the key metric of the fusion triple product, as shown in this graph. The fusion triple product is the product of fuel density times the ion temperature times the confinement time. And the graph shows that the minimum triple product required varies greatly for the different fuels that one uses. And in particular, you can see that with the advanced fuels, not only is the minimum triple product one to three orders of magnitude higher than for deuterium tritium, but also the temperature required at that minimum is one to two orders of magnitude higher for fusion with advanced fuels. Now, what are the challenges for enabling fusion with advanced fuels? That requires innovations in control and manipulation of the energy input and exchange in fusion plasmas, as well as their assembly and confinement. This is shown uh, in the graphic. And in particular, we really need to leverage physics and technology innovations to enable achieving the required plasma conditions for fusion with advanced fuels. This slide lists many examples of the R&D needs that could help enable FAF. This slide shows some sample technical metrics of interest. For example, identifying a self-consistent power balance with scientific energy gain greater than 10, lowering the minimum required triple product by more than a factor of 10, raising the peak confined pressure by a factor of 10 or greater. And finally, we encourage you to identify and justify your own ambitious metrics that could help enable fusion with advanced fuels. Finally, it's important to note some FAF-related topics that are of lower immediate priority. First, R&D of limited interest to a specific concept, fuel supply issues, fundamental research or technology development without a clearly identified pathway to enabling FAF, 
And finally, brute force and or commercially impractical approaches. Thank you very much for your time and interest. 